feel with swift transitions. Mm-hmm. None, none on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hope on things eternal, and just hold, hold on to God's unchanging hand.
Philip Monumental Amy Church, located here in Savannah, Georgia. I am Melinda Hodge, and we invite you to experience Monumental, the digital broadcast ministry of St. Philip Monumental Amy Church, the mother church of African Methodism in the state of Georgia, where the Reverend Dr. Bernard Clark serves as our senior pastor. We send greetings to Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, who is our presiding prelate here in the 6th Episcopal District, located in Georgia. To Christy Davis Jackson Esquire, our Episcopal Supervisor, and to each of you who felt compelled to join us on this platform today as we experience Monumental. <laughs> Thank you. 
Shall we pray? Father, it is in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we come to you today. We bless you for you are God alone and you are God all by yourself. You hold everything together by the power of your word. You said to one and to another, go again. You are God of mercy. You are God of love and your mercy and your love endures from everlasting to everlasting. And so we honor you as the head of our lives and we honor you as as the one who sits high and the one who looks low, beholding the good and the evil. So this on this day, we open up our mouths and we declare that we're going to bless you. We're going to honor you. We're going to give you glory and we're going to give you praise. For if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. We would have been swallowed up. But God, we thank you right now that we're not destroyed because of your goodness and because of your mercy. We declare that this is the day that you have made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, oh God, for your people on this day, the sheep of your pasture, the maid of your hand. And Father, we thank you because you've been so kind to us and that you blessed us to see another opportunity and so father we're going to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise and we're going to bless you like never before we're going to worship you like never before we're going to give you all the praise all the glory and all the honor you do because there is healing power right now flowing at the mention of the name of jesus and so we thank you right now father as our faith comes alive. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pause just to tell you thank you. We thank you today that you're a miracle worker, that you are light in the midst of darkness. We thank you from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet that we are blessed and we are healed. We declare that we will not die, but we declare that we will live to declare the works of the Lord. And so, Father, even now as we're praying, we lift up the nations back to you, God. We declare right now that we are nothing without you. And we thank you, dear God, that no weapons formed against Against us will be able to prosper for this is the heritage of your service and father we thank you that we're walking in our breakthrough and we're walking in our anointing and we're walking in our healing and we're walking in our deliverance and so let the peace of god which passes all understanding guard and keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace god we thank you right now for a yoke destroying anointing god and father we ask that you forgive us on this great day of all of our sins uh, and those sins of our thoughts and those sins of omission and those sins of commission right now god lion of judah we call upon you god lion of judah we call upon you to put your foot on corona right now for you said in your word that at the mention of the name of jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess so father we submit to your will and to your your ways and we declare thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven let it be so now in the name of jesus uh, god we glorify you we magnify you we restore you we lift you up and father we are grateful on today god we're grateful that in spite of what it might look like we're filled with promise we're filled with potential and we're filled with possibilities and we worship and we praise you for if we didn't have ten thousand tongues that, that wouldn't be enough to tell you thank you and we're only still here because of your grace and your mercy and for that, God, we are thankful. So, Father, we ask that you go through every household listening on this airwaves on this morning, God, that you would touch everyone, that you would build a blood wall of protection around us, God. We pray right now for those that are going through bereavement, God, that you would read every tear that is shed, God, and whatever we need on this day, that, God, we know that you are sufficient and gracious enough to meet them, for you are a great provider. God, bless right now our caregivers and our first responders, God. We know that you are protecting and keeping, so, Father, bless because we know that you're moving in. God, we thank you today that our miracles are on the way. God, we thank you today for our deliverance. And God, we thank you for the blood running warm in our veins and a reasonable portion of health and strength, God, in the name of Jesus. And now we declare according to your word, thanks be unto God that you have given us the spirit to triumph, uh, that death be rebuked in Jesus' name. Uh, God, we drop our plans and we pick up your plans, God. Uh, we said that you said in your word that you want no evil to come against us. So God, we declare healing to go forth right now. Uh, we declare that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. So God, we need a healing in our land right now. God, we ask that you touch right now, that you save 
right now, that you sanctify right now, God, where there is peace, God, we where there's calamity, God, we ask that you speak peace right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that a revival is breaking forth, God, that you are setting the captives free, God. We thank you, God, for your word, God. We thank you for your healing power, God. We declare that it is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord right where you at. Come on and bless the Lord right where you at. Come on and bless the Lord. Open up your mouth with the fruit of your lips, with the fruit of your lips. That means you have to open up your mouth and give God some praise. Give God some glory. He deserves all our praise. He deserves all our glory because he's healing us. He is delivering us. He is setting us free. You ought to thank him on this lovely Sunday morning. You ought to bless him because he is God all by himself. You are God alone. And so you fill our hearts and our souls with a yes. Yes to your will and yes to your way. God, search us and find out. If you find anything that's not like you, God, we ask that you take it out right now in the name of Jesus. We're pulling down a yes on this morning. We're Pulling down a yes on this morning. God, our soul cries out, yes, God, our soul cries out, yes, God, our soul cries out, yes, God, fill us with more of you, fill us with more of you. We don't come in any form or fashion, God, but we come to get more of you on this morning, God. So fill us with more of you. Anybody want a word from the Lord today? With all the mess that's going on, anybody need a word from the Lord today? Now, come on, you know how we do point up here to this preacher. Come on, let's do it. Cry out, preach. Preach or preach. Preach. Preach or preach. Come on, say it like you mean it. Preach. Preach or preach. Final selection, the next voice you hear will be that of the Reverend Dr. Bernard Clark. Pastor of St. Philip Monumental AME Church, whosoever has ears to hear, let them hear.
your mercy toward us. For your goodness and your mercy toward us. gospel as recorded by Matthew, Matthew's gospel, chapter 20, Matthew's gospel, chapter 20. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 20, beginning at verse 29, Matthew 20 and beginning at 29, we find some very interesting reading. The gospel as recorded by Matthew, Matthew's gospel, chapter 20, beginning at verse 29, we find these words. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed Jesus. And behold, there were two blind men sitting by the wayside. And when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. Verse 31, and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still, called them and said, what is it that you would have for me to do? They said unto Jesus, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed Jesus. Let the church say amen. I want to leave this subject with you in the spirit of annual conference. The subject simply says, say it until you see it. Say that with me. Say it until you see it. Say it again. Say it until you see it. It is important that you and I understand the power of the tongue. When we understand the power of the tongue, we understand that in many cases, the tongue can be a dangerous thing. I submit to you this morning that in a congregation this size that almost every one of us in here can go back and think about something that somebody said to us years ago that somehow we just can't shake it. Something that somebody said to us that we'd rather not even tell you what it is. Something that someone said to us that have, have harmed us, if you will, along this journey that we call life. 
if, if, if you really want to understand the power of a destructive tongue, you don't have to look far. You can just look on the television and look at the president. He has a destructive tongue, and, and it is important for those of us who claim to have been washed in the blood of the Lamb to call a spade a spade. It is important for us to understand that, 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 that not only can God use a tongue, but the devil can also. Oh, I come to tell somebody today, you ought not let the devil use your tongue. He got enough weapons already. He don't really need to use yours. Amen? But the power of the tongue can, 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 can be a destructive thing when we look at our president who will say the first thing that comes to his mouth. And understand, I said mouth. Because if it go by your brain, you might not say it. But he will say the first thing that will come to his mouth. Yes, what, what is he saying? What does black people have to lose? As he was running, as he was running, running for the presidency. What is it that black, we got a lot to lose and we're looking at it now. Amen. Somebody, when we look at what is going on in our society, when we look at the coronavirus, when we look at the fact that racism is still alive and well, yes, we got a lot to lose. As a matter of fact, I didn't come to preach about him, but I would just want to give you some facts. That in three years, uh, there were those who say he told 16,241 lies. If that ain't the devil using your tongue, I don't know. Amen. I don't know what is, but, but when we look at the devil using his tongue, still refuse to insist that black lives matter, refuse to talk about uh, the, the degradation of our people, refuse to talk about the atrocities that we face on a daily basis. Amen. When we look at the tongue, the tongue is a dangerous thing. When we look at it, we have to look at James. James said there is something about the tongue. In James, the third chapter, James said that the, small, the tongue is one of the smallest members, but it can cause the most problems. Or oh, somebody know what I'm talking about. James says that when we look at the tongue and we look at man when it comes to the tongue, that the tongue, amen, is comparable, if you will, to a stern on a ship, to a, a rudder on a ship, that when you look at a ship, a ship can be a big vessel. Many of us go down to the downtown Savannah, the River Street, and look at the big ships coming through. And, and, and there is something about every ship that comes through. While it is a big vessel, it is controlled by a very small device. James says that when we look at the tongue and when it relates to man, that, that man can tame beasts, he can tame birds of the air, he can tame even serpents on the land. He can tame even those things that are in the sea. But man can't tame his tongue. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this one. Praise the Lord. But, but when we look at the tongue, amen, we have to understand that while man can't tame the tongue, thank God he can. Oh, somebody ought to be a witness today. James says that one of the problems with the tongue is that out of the same mouth comes cursings and blessings. Am I talking about somebody's situation? Am I talking about somebody that you know? He said that it ought not be. Shirley sees a saying about the tongue. She said a tongue, a, a, a tongue can abuse and carry bad news. The seeds of distrust will sow. And unless you've never made, a mistake in your life, you better be careful of the thong, stones that you throw. Can I get a witness today? When we look at, when we look at the tongue, amen, the tongue is a very, can be a very destructive thing. When we look at the tongue, the tongue has torn up many houses. It wasn't because of what somebody done, it was because of what somebody said. When we look at the tongue, the tongue has gotten a lot of people fired. The tongue has torn up a lot of churches because of what people say. Oh, I come to tell you that there is a difference when you look at the tongue of a non-believer and there's a difference when you look at the tongue of a believer. I'm talking about the tongue of one that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. 
when you look at the believer's tongue, you see a godly tongue. When you look at the believer's tongue, you see an understanding tongue. When you look at the believer's tongue, you see somebody with a tongue who sometimes would rather hold it to themselves than to hurt somebody else. Oh, you ought to thank God. You ought to thank God if God has been working on your tongue. Yes, the tongue of one who's been washed in the blood. Those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and those who have been on the battlefield for the Lord. Yes, yes, there's a difference in the tongue. When we look at the tongue of those of us who've given our life to Christ, when we really understand the power of the tongue, we understand what went on in the book of Genesis. When we look at the power of the tongue, we look at the fact that in Genesis 1, God said... He said, let there be light. He divided the light from the darkness. Called the light day and called the darkness night. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters to divide the waters from the waters. And he called that firmament heaven. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place and let the dry land appear. He called the dry land earth. Somebody hear what I'm saying? When we understand that God said, we understand that those of us who've been washed in the blood of the lamb, that we have the power of the almighty God on our side when we use our tongue. As a matter of fact, when we understand the power of the tongue, we can do as Paul De declared in 417 of Romans he said that we can call those things that are not as though they are somebody ought to be happy about that today because when we look at the tongue of a believer we look at the tongue that is washed in faith a tongue that understands that we walk by faith and not by sight a tongue that understands that it won't be this way always a tongue that understands that for God we'll live and for God we shall die. Well, when we look at the story that we find here in the book of Matthew, we find here Jesus is on a journey. Many of us know that he's on his way to Jerusalem. I love Jesus because he was never in too much of a hurry to help somebody. Some of us get in too big of a hurry. We we're too busy to help anybody. And if we be honest with ourselves, sometimes we're even too busy to help ourselves. But Jesus was never too busy to help someone. The Bible lets us know that they departed, amen, from Jericho, a great multitude that followed Jesus. And when we look at what is going on, that, that this road that they were traveling on, it wasn't like the roads that some of us ride on now. This was a very dangerous road. And I'm not talking about it having bumps on it. I'm talking about it having individuals on it that would rob you. This was a very dangerous road because when we look at it, the fact is that, that, that everybody, most who traveled along the road, would find themselves in danger at some time or another. The Bible lets us know that, that but even though the road was dangerous, that there were two blind men. Bible doesn't give us their name. Bible doesn't tell us what their lineage are, but we know that they were blind. And the Bible says that they were sitting by the wayside. S somebody waiting on me to give you three points. That's the, that's the first one. You got to position yourself. Some of us want to be blessed, but we don't want to position ours. You know anybody like that? Some of us want God to do everything for us, but we don't want to position ourselves. What does it cost to position yourself? It doesn't cost you anything. But what does it, is the cause of positioning that you know how to humble yourself? Yeah. Amen. God is not, he, he, he's, he's not, if you will, lifted up because of your inability to wait on him. God is not concerned with the fact that you have hurried sickness and, and you want him to bless you when you want him to bless you. Every now and then you got to wait. 
we can't get too far away from the church of old because the church of old said every now and then you got to tarry. Or oh, somebody know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to somebody who's had to tarry for something. Listen, when you really understand praying, you understand that every now and then you can pray for something one time. And you look around, it happened. But every now and then you'll find yourself with your back against the wall. And you got to pray and 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 pray. But I come to tell somebody, don't stop praying. Because I believe that you're positioning yourself for a blessing. This road was such a bad road until they called it, they named it, they called it the wilderness of Jericho. Praise the Lord. But these men were in such a condition that they didn't care where they were because they heard that Jesus was passing by. Oh, somebody ought to be opening your ears now to hear what thus says the Lord. They heard that Jesus was passing by. Oh, I'm glad that they heard it every now and then. We need to rely on our ears. Somebody ought to say amen. That when we rely on our ears, we rely, amen, on one of the greatest faith vessels that we have. Because the Bible declares that faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes, I'm almost finished now, by the word of God. That, that, that you need to open up your ears and you need to hear what thus says the Lord. That there are some people, I'm not talking about now that we're dealing with the virus, but I'm talking about even before. That there are some who would argue that I don't have to go to church. But how else are you going to hear the word and feel it at the same time? I, I didn't say you couldn't feel it through the medium, but every now and then. You need to reach out and touch the Lord. While he is passing by, the Bible said that they heard, amen, that Jesus was coming by. Some of us, when we hear he's coming, we run the other way. But when they heard he was coming, they ran right in his way. Somebody need to get in the way. If you get in the way, God will take care of you. Can I get a witness? I know he will. Because he's done it so many times. He's done it for me. And he's done it for those around me. As a matter of fact, if he never do it again, he's already done it enough for me to tell him thank you. He's already done it enough for me to shout hallelujah. He's already done it enough for me to know that he'll do it again. They were positioned for a blessing. The Bible says uh, that when Jesus passed by, uh, they began to cry out. Uh, somebody know where I'm going. Uh, that every now and then, uh, you got to cry out. Uh, there are some things that will go on in your life uh, that you might be able to just moan a little bit. Uh, but every now and then, uh, you got to cry out. Uh, and you got to tell the devil... Uh, to get out of my house, uh, get out of my life, uh, get out of my children, uh, get out of my church, uh, get out of my mind, uh, get out of my car, uh, get off my job. Uh, the Bible says uh, that they cried out. Uh, I'm glad about it uh, because they give us uh, a great example uh, of what to do. Uh, some things uh, you can get done by sitting down, uh, but other things uh, you're going to have to get up uh, and cry out. Uh, praise the Lord. The Bible says uh, that when they began to cry out, uh, that there were some AMEs around them. Huh? Say, you're crying too loud. Huh? You're singing too loud. Huh? You're preaching too hard. Huh? Praise the Lord. Huh? We don't do it like that. Huh? Praise the Lord. Huh? Well, I don't know what you've been through, huh? but what I've been through huh, declares huh, that I gotta cry out huh, every now and then. Huh? Excuse me, if you will. Huh? Move away, if you will. Huh? But I got to cry out uh, 
every now and then I'm too old to worry about who's going to talk about me I'm too old to worry about who's going to look at me he's done so much for my children until I gotta cry out he's done so much for me until I gotta cry out Praise the Lord. The Bible said that they were determined. And when you're determined, you'll do what you got to do. The Bible said that the more they told them to be quiet, the louder they became. Somebody got to get loud for Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Somebody's watching me. I got to make sure that I gave you all three points. But the third point is that you got to expect some time to have a confrontation. So many times we'll talk about what we got to do. But we'll talk about it as if it's going to be easy. But nobody told me that the road would be easy. Nobody told me that every day will be Sunday. Nobody told me that every month will be the month of May. The Bible said that they cried out. Is it anybody in here that need to cry out? You're in the right place at the right time. You need to cry out when we look at when we look at the fact that the police officer will put his knee on a black man's neck on his back and kill him we need to cry out when we look at the fact that the police officers will go into a house and kill a Breonna Taylor we need to cry out when we look at the fact that some gangsters will catch a young boy running in his own neighborhood and shoot him and film him at the same time Ahmaud Aubrey we need to cry out, cry out for George Floyd. We need to cry out, praise the Lord, when we look at the fact that there is over 126,000 people that have lost their lives to COVID-19. We need to cry out, praise the Lord. Somebody need to say it until you see it. Yeah, if I were you, I'd say it until I'm able to see it. Somebody, you need a house today. Say it until you see it. Somebody might be sick in your body, but say it until you see it. Because God will. He'll take care of you. Say it until you see it. Somebody's son is in trouble, but say it until you see him get out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say it until you see it. I don't know what you need, but whatever you need, say it until you see it. I'm glad about it that I learned how to say it until I see it. He brought me from a mighty long way, and I'm going to continue to call on his name. I'm going to continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand because he's a good God. Say it until you see it. I'm trying to sit down now. Praise the Lord. There are some people who say that all lives matter. We know that all lives matter, but we got to keep saying that black lives matter until we can see it, that black lives matter. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody tonight, you're going to get an appointment. Don't know where you're going, but I come to tell you that if you pray about it, everything will be all right. Say it until you see it. Somebody need to say I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. Say it until you see it. And God will. God will. God will. God will. God will. He'll take care of you. Yes, he will. You got to call it. You got to speak it into existence. And God will. 
He'll do the rest. Say it until you see it for tomorrow. I thank God for you, you, and especially you. Let me encourage you to continue to give until this ministry, St. Philip Monumental AME Church, Savannah, Georgia, 1112 Jefferson Street. You may give on Giblify. You may give, amen, through our post office box. You may give by coming by the church. We thank you for every gift that you've already given. And we thank you in advance for that gift that you will give. May God bless you, you, and especially you, until we meet again. Well, we've got to get out of here now. We pray that something was done, something was said, was a blessing unto you. But I want to bless you as we prepare to leave God's presence. Come on and lift your hands with me. Come on and lift your hands with me right where you are. Walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Most of all, love God, because he first loved me. And now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling or falling to the only wise God our Savior be power majesty and dominion now henceforth and forevermore and the blessed people of God in our cyber sanctuary declare amen amen and amen